Greetings, Raji Narangsing here, transgender activist, author, and actress. So I grew up identifying as multiracial, based on my mom and my dad. And the way my sister and I grew up, we at a pretty young age identified ourselves as multiracial. But recently, I wanted to get a breakdown of that. I wanted to kind of get a breakdown of all my different ethnicities. So I went through Ancestry.com, $99, pretty reasonable. And within six weeks, I got the report back. Okay, so here we go. 51% Asian. My dad was 100% East Indian from the island of Trinidad. And my mom is multiracial. So 24% African, 21% uh, European, and 4% Pacific Islander. <laughs> so mom really mixed it on up with me, you know. Anyway, in slavery times, uh, specifically New Orleans did this, where they would classify people based on the amount of black blood that they have. So I would have been considered during those times a quadroon. Someone that's one-fourth black. Well, I'm a little less than that, but I, I, they probably would have put me in that category. Quadroon. So, hi, everyone. Raji Narang Singh here. Quadroon. <laughs> anyway, recently I attended a function. It was an African-American function. I'm not going to say the name of it and what it was all involving because I'm not about throwing anyone under the bus. I'm a person about unification and being a part of the community and really supporting our community. So it's not about throwing anyone under the bus. But when I tell you, I felt like the white comic that has no connection to urban America and the hood and decides to go to a black comedy club to perform and try and make those folks laugh. And it's like, Crickets. <laughs> I felt like I was in sixth grade all over again. And I was like the oddball, you know, the, the, the kid that all the other kids looked at like, you're not a part of us. You're not one of us. You know, you're the oddball. I had that feeling. It's crazy. Now, I mean, of course people connected with me, but I'm saying the overall vibe was that. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Like, I have spoken at many, many, many venues and events for almost the last 20 years, hundreds. And I always am able to connect with folks. Now, I remember about two or three times where it didn't happen. And guess what? They were all African-American venues. Is it because I'm quadroon? I'm not black enough? <laughs> well, no. I mean, okay, my friend came out to support. She came out. She's an Italian-American woman. And when I tell you, before the show started, she comes up to me very upset saying she's leaving. And I said, why are you leaving so soon? The show hasn't even started. I can't. I don't like the vibe. I can't take it here. They're looking, people are looking at me like, what are you doing here? And I said, really? And she said, yeah. And mind you, there were there were a few other Anglo people there, but she said she just wasn't feeling comfortable. People were giving her dirty looks. Um, she said that she tried to smile and like, you know, say hello to some, and they just like gave her these stone cold stares. And, you know, I had to look at her and I said, girl, I know what you're talking about. I know the attitude that you're talking about. I know it very well. And I said, I'm really sorry that you feel this way and you've had to go through this, but I understand if you have to leave. Now, that's the start of my night. So can you imagine? It was like, okay, this has already gotten off to a horrible start. What is in store for me? Like I said, I have spoken at many, 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 many venues and been able to connect with folks. But for some reason, it wasn't happening. And it like, you know, 
two other, two or three other times, they were all African American events. Now, I'm thinking, is it really that I'm like not black enough? I, you know, that I'm, I'm multiracial, and you know, like I said, dad, a hundred percent East Indian, mom, very mixed. And uh, my mom grew up in a neighborhood that was a very mixed neighborhood, Italians and Jews uh, and, you know, um, people of color, but a lot of mixed families live there. And then hence, you know, we come along, my sister and I, and we grow up. My parents got a nice house in a very nice area of Philadelphia, and we grew up in a very nice neighborhood. No hood, honey. I never lived in the hood. Okay, so I don't have that experience about me. So maybe it was that. Maybe it's the fact that I'm transgender. I mean, the majority of the people that were there were uh, gay black men and lesbian black women. And, you know, our LGBT community, certainly we have our issues. I mean, it's gotten a lot better, but there are issues between the groups of us. And, uh, you know, it was like, who is this transgender woman trying to get our attention? <laughs> that's the ad That's how I felt. It's like, oh, really? You're going to try to get our attention? I, I was like, oh, my God, what is going on here? What is going on here? Anyway, it could have been that. It could have been the fact that I'm a northerner. I wasn't born and raised in the South. I don't have that Southern vibe. You know, I'm a Northern. I was born in New York. I grew up in Philadelphia. So I have that Northern vibe. It could be that I'm a pretty unique character. I mean, I am different. I'm odd. You know, and the way I, and the way I carry myself, the way I look, the way I communicate, the way, I, you know, so I understand that. I get that. It could have been all of the above. Who the hell knows? But there was a disconnect. And I was like, Oh my God, you know, because I'm all about connecting with my audience, connecting with people. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you this. In life, we live and we have experiences. And hopefully we learn from our experiences. And what I certainly learned from this one is that First of all, I have to be very selective and very careful with who and what I lend my talents to, my gifts to, because I know that I have the gift of connecting with people. I am a dynamic individual who, through the years, and especially in the last few years, have connected with thousands of people around the world. White people, black people, Asian people, Indian people, Latino people, all types of people, young, old, rich, poor people. And I know I have that gift. So there's just the reality of it is that there's just some audiences that just aren't my audience. It's, and I have to be able to come to terms with that and accept that. And I'm thinking that's what that was uh, recently. That was not my audience, honey, because they, I would say 80% of them, they just weren't feeling me. Hey, it's, you know, and let me tell you, no offense to any one, any particular group, any of my friends or family, but I have to call it like I see it and feel it. I, I, that's the type of person I am. And that's how I felt. I felt such a disconnect, like I was not a part of. You know, I was being looked at as like, you know, different and the oddball and, uh, and just not a part of the group for whatever reason. Well, lesson number one, like I said, be very careful and selective with what and who I lend my talents to. Number two, it's okay to say no. I am a person, I always try to, you know, 
pitch in and help. And I have that humanitarian spirit about me. You ask me to be a part of something, as long as my schedule permits, I'm on board. I'm there and I'm, I'm going to be chairing and doing my part. That's the spirit that I have about me. And But I have to realize that it's okay to say no sometimes. I don't have to do everything. And so that's another lesson that I take from this. You know, it's funny, as I live my life, I, I left that event thinking, God, haven't you learned already? And, you know, I guess we're all on our own individual journeys, learning at our own pace. And, you know, hey, this is just another uh, uh, situation that happened that is affirming for me that I need to be very careful with me and respectful to who I am as a person. And that's what it is. I have to take care of Raji. All right. But what I know more, most and foremost beyond those two lessons is that when you start to lift the layers of who we are, all the different labels, when you remove them from yourself, you and me, when you remove your labels to the core of who we are, we all are spirits of this divine universe living the human experience. And I know that to the core of me. I know that. And I live that. I believe that. And that's how I try to live my life. And so when I left that, that event feeling like I wasn't a part of, and I was like a little bit ostracized, I left feeling really bad because that's not the person that I am. I know that we all are connected. Okay, so there are a lot of people out there that do feel my vibe, that resonate with what I have to do, what I have to say and what I do. Lots of people. And to you all, love you guys. Here I am. Ta-da! But there are people out there that don't connect with me, don't resonate with what I have to say and what I do. And to all of you guys, kiss my quadroon ass. Yeah, kiss my quadroon ass. <laughs> Let me stop. Oh, I forgot to mention, I can't be a bitch too. That's another layer. That's another label. I can't be a bitch. No, but really, I, I mean, I, it really comes down to knowing that there are just going to be people that connect with you and there's going to be people that don't. There you go. Had to share this, guys. Oh my God, it's like, I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? This is not my audience. And I say that to say, love, peace, and blessings.